Check this footage out, y'all. The Sasquatch you see here was recorded by a camera left on a shelter site. Massive creature. Keep watching, you'll see it just seamlessly pick up a tree log and just toss it. Check them out. These are massive creatures, guys. Look how he's just tossing around those trees. This is a 100% legit Sasquatch. And these creatures are everywhere. Look at that. No human can do that. Amazing. I say this one is around eight to nine feet tall. So the size of this thing is insane. Eight to nine feet tall. That's definitely not your average bear. But before we jump to conclusions and say it's Bigfoot, we've got to ask some questions. Sure, it's big, it's strong, it's tossing around tree logs like they're nothing. But is it possible we're not looking at some undiscovered ape man roaming the woods? Today's special effects and costumes are no joke. We've all seen movies where CG and practical effects can make the unreal look real. Someone could have easily staged this, with the right props, and a hulking person in a costume. And hey, what about those logs? Could they be hollowed out to look heavier than they are? If the goal is to sell you on a Sasquatch sighting, they'd have to pull out all the stops. Now, I'm not saying Bigfoot's out of the question. But if you're on the fence, this could just as easily be a really well-executed hoax. After all, no one's gotten clear, indisputable evidence of Bigfoot. So could this just be another case of someone trying to build the legend? I guess until someone gets that fork close-up shot, the debate rolls on. Yet we have to understand that Bigfoot's existence could seem possible when you consider the vast remote forests across the world, like the Pacific Northwest in Canada, where humans rarely venture. These dense, inaccessible terrains offer the perfect hiding spots for a large creature to remain undetected, leaving only brief sightings and mysterious tracks behind. In such vast, untouched wilderness, it's easy to imagine how something like Bigfoot could thrive in secrecy. Anyhow, check out this video and let me know what you think. Bigfoot finally caught on camera again? Or was he? Let's zoom in on that, y'all. Now, this came straight from TMZ, Oklahoma City uh, footage right here, ladies and gentlemen. They are claiming this is real. I don't know, but let's go ahead and zoom in. Check it out. So there he's just chilling, right? He minding his own bit. Bigfoot minding his own business, and we have somebody filming him. Check it out. Kind of creepy if you look at it. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know how true this is, y'all, but there it is. <laughs> Let's go. Imagine you're just doing your job and you're having a casual conversation with a woman. Miss Abigail, right? Everything seems normal. Until dispatch hits you with the bombshell. She's been dead for two years. This is easily one of the weirdest videos I've ever seen. Check out this guy talking to no one. Dispatch to 329. Yes, sir. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to a early lady. I saw her walking by the store and uh, she said she's looking for Mr. Griffin. Her name is Miss Abigail. Did you say Miss Abigail? Yes, ma'am. She says she wants to see Mr. Griffin, and I told her that uh, the canvas is closed, that she should come tomorrow morning, and she might see Mr. Griffin. Are you sure you're saying Miss Abigail?
Like, she's been passed on for two years now. Am I here with Abigail? Miss Abigail, was, she, she died two years ago. You mean you can't see the person I'm talking to? No, there's nobody in front of you at all. So who or what? Was he talking to? The fact that he's completely calm while chatting with someone nobody else can see, as if she's just another person passing by, is what really gets me. And when he realizes they can't see her, there's no panic, no freak out. Just this eerie acceptance. How did he know her name? And why was she asking for someone, Mr. Gresham, like she's got unfinished business? It's almost like she came back for a reason, caught in this bizarre twilight zone moment. I don't know about you, but if I were him, I'd be checking over my shoulder the rest of the night. And how would you go back to work the next day after discovering this? Guys, I'm here in 1956. As you can tell behind me, I'm at McDonald's, guys. How do you deny this proof? Let me show you something. This is going to blow your freaking mind. How do you even begin to deny this proof, guys? I'm literally here. This is McDonald's. Look at those beautiful ones. McDonald's, guys. You cannot deny. It. I'm going to show you something. Let me show you something else. This is really going to blow your mind. I'm not even going to lie. That guy bought me a cheeseburger. That's where people sit and eat. I mean, guys, how do you deny this proof? McDonald's. Here in Utah, 1956. I'm gonna go get this some dessert now. The world is changing rapidly, and with each passing day, it's becoming harder to separate fact from fiction. Now, imagine being at the center of a crime scene investigation. All the evidence points to a suspect caught on security footage. But here's the terrifying twist. The person committing the crime is wearing a mask with your face. How chilling would it be to see yourself, your likeness, on video doing something you know you never did? The lines between reality and deception blur, and suddenly proving your innocence in a world where even faces can be faked becomes a nightmare scenario. Bro, look at this. Like, why? Why would you? Bro, when I first saw this, I legit parked here and was like, yo, what is this for it looks real it looks dead ass real man and i gotta see this every morning uh bro hoa come on now you always talk about me about my trash can that is some scary look at that nah bro nah i'm sorry nah dog i really thought this was a real girl or whoever that is i ain't gonna look at the back seat now though i'm scared <laughs> this is one reason why October is so fun. Honestly, if I were the neighbor, I'd be creeped out too. But in a good way. Living forever is a concept many of us dream about, imagining a life where time has no limits and every moment can be fully explored. The idea of endless experiences and the ability to witness the future is both exciting and deeply alluring. Yet, it also raises questions about what it truly means to live a fulfilled life. Well, check out this clip where Dan, the happiness coach, talks about recent scientific discoveries that bring us closer to making this dream a reality. Hey everybody, what's going on? 
I got some very exciting news today to share with you, and I hope you're as excited about this as I am. This article says, a groundbreaking scientific discovery shows that we can reverse death. And if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I have a, I've been talking about stuff like this. I've had a near-death experience. Um, I've had a lot of experiences actually that show me that death isn't real, um, that this universe that we live in is actually a illusion or a simulation or a dream. But now this came out in 2022, the end of 2022. I have another article I'm gonna show you too that came out this year. But basically what this is talking about that we can reverse death and there's they go on to tell this story about this um child so everybody knows about life support right and how life support can help people in a certain state in the hospital right and basically what happened is they kept this child alive for five years and saw her go through puberty her body kept living and changing and growing even though she was in this sort of um, comatose state they had her hooked up to feeding tubes and so forth and they kept her alive well this led to a discovery of how they can do this with they use pig brains that died and then hours later they were able to revive them with something called organ X which is basically like life support just like they did with the child but on steroids essentially what it does is it over a really slow period of time and the key is to do this slowly is they reanimate the dead cells by giving it um, not just the things that life support gives classically but also at a cellular level it gives it nutrients um, it regulates ph it does all these different things that the body would normally do that our bodies normally do but they do it in an artificial way let me show you all right, so this is basically an illustration. It's not the real thing. It's just an illustration of how organ X blood, quote unquote, is derived. Um, basically, they're using things like uh, cows, uh, you know, bovine hemoglobin to spread oxygen and get um, different things into the actual cells. And then over a short period of time, so again, the pig dies, they take the brain cells hours later, and then they slowly feed it stuff through things like that look like this sort of and those cells slowly come back to life and something very interesting happens once they do this once they do this the heart's electrical activity had resumed spontaneously without chest compressions or other life so when they're doing this on a whole body not just a brain cell but then taking the whole body electrical activity starts to come back. Movements start to happen. Um, in one of these examples, they said that the, the animal actually turned its head. And it wasn't just like a, a, a jerking motion. This was a what seemed to be a conscious movement of the actual animal. How crazy is that? And this goes on to the next thing in this next article. So this article came out this year in 2024. Scientists have uncovered a third state of life which starts after cell death. And this again goes on to talk about how there is continued electrical activity in our brain, in our body, because we, and this is me talking now, we are electrical beings. Everything is electrical. Electrical means electron. And if you know anything about electrons, they're in a cloud, right? We don't actually have uh, definitive physical characteristics of an electron. They sort of pop in and out of existence. They're sort of like a probability, which goes into this idea of living in a quantum world or a simulation or a dream, etc. And it's showing that over these, especially over these next, next couple of years, it's gonna get really, really interesting as they start to go down this rabbit hole even more and see that death is actually an illusion and that there's really no such thing and if we really wanted to we could live way longer than we currently do and not just through medical means but through our own ability so the reason why they are doing this is because they think they can derive drugs from it and they can help with things like organ transplant because um, one of the things is it's a timely manner right now. You have to get it done quickly and so forth. But this extends that ability so you can essentially help more people out, right? Which is a great thing. They have this hypothesis that there's specialized channels and pumps embedded in the outer membranes of cells that serve as intricate electrical circuits. 
the authors wrote in the review of this available research. These channels and pumps generate electrical signals that allow cells to communicate with each other and execute specific functions such as growth and movement, shaping the structure of the organism they form. These are the things that they're deriving from the so-called dead cells that they're seeing that this electrical activity keeps going. And this is what they're hoping to use um, as a drug or some sort of intervention to help people in late stages of death or organ transplant and other things, diseases, etc. And But I want to point out the fact that they're talking about these electrical signals because that is essentially what this whole experience is. It's a, an electrical thing. Our body is electric and in the knowingness of this and in the as we become more aware of how this actually interplays with physical matter, we're gonna see how powerful we are as creators of our reality because our thoughts are electrical signals too. And our thoughts generate how we feel. So if you have a bad thought, you feel bad. If you have a good thought, you feel good. And that good feeling creates or helps to create, let's say, let's call it co-creation, creates our reality, but your personal reality is generated from thought to feeling, to action, to behaviors, to how we experience the world. And it's all of this mystery of how electrons work. So again, to wrap up, we can reverse death because death isn't real. Uh, we're actually these spiritual beings or these electrical beings, these energy beings. Energy is electricity, is electrons. And this is going to change the whole way that we see everything because so many people fear death or are scared of it or et cetera, et cetera. It's also going to extend our life because we're going to want to live longer and experience more things. But it's also just going to give us more of an understanding of who we really are, which is not just these human bodies, this flesh, but this consciousness, this conscious awareness, spiritual being that is here to change reality. We're not here to conform to the old ways. We're here to forge a new path. Let me know in the comments what you think about all this. As tempting as the idea of living forever may be, it raises deeper questions. Would immortality eventually strip life of its meaning? Part of what makes life so precious is its fleeting nature, the urgency to experience grow and make the most of our limited time. If we lived forever, would the moments that matter now lose their significance, becoming endless cycles of repetition? At what point does the excitement of discovery fade into monotony? Perhaps it's our mortality that gives life its purpose, reminding us to cherish every fleeting moment? This creepy video is going viral right now, and it comes from a user named Felicia. I'll tag it below. And after casually playing with her dog from the back porch, she swears that someone whispered in her ear. But not only that, her security camera caught the whole thing. And it's pretty unsettling. I'll play the full clip with no music, but let me know what you think. Now, in case you didn't catch it, I'll play it again with boosted audio and take a look of how genuinely terrified she is.